Hey, this is Jeff from the Icebox Radio Theater, and you are listening to Freezer Treats, the podcast where we thaw out something delicious for you from the archive of the Icebox Radio Theater. Bit of a departure today. Uh, at the end of the first week of this podcast, we've done a new episode each and every day. Uh, there's been some horror, there's been some mystery, but you know, we haven't had children. We haven't had a lot of kids involved in the podcast. That changes today with a play from a number of years ago, and I'll be happy to tell you all about it, uh, all about the backstory. But uh, this play is called The Gold of Cormorant Bay, and it's near and dear to my heart because it's really the only time that we sat down and did an entire episode with a mostly kid cast. And the only way I can describe it is it was Goonies set on Rainy Lake. In fact, it's very close to Goonies, as you shall see when you listen. Let's enjoy a clip right now of The Gold of Cormorant Bay. Well, we need to do something. Yeah, yeah, we do. What's up, Riley? What do you mean? You got that look in your eye. Oh, yeah, that schemey look. The look you get when you're cooking up an idea. You totally do, Riley. I bet he has come up with something good. I bet he's come up with something awesome. What is it? You guys are dweebs. Come on, man, what is it? Riley? I was just thinking. One last adventure. You want to swim out to Canoe Rock again? Better. I think we should go after the gold of Cormant Bay. You are a wild man. High five. I'm serious. So am I. High five. I think we should. Riley, high five. Fine. Thank you. What's the gold of Cormador Bay? Cormorant. It's a bird. We're looking for bird's gold? You never heard the story, have you? I don't know. This is awesome. She's never heard the story. Dibs on telling it. Dang it. Too slow. Okay, so like a million years ago. Tell it right, Nickerson. Okay, so like a thousand years ago, in old time horse and buggy days. What's a buggy? I don't know. In old timey days, there used to be gold mines all over this lake. And there was this one miner they called Mutilated Jones, on account of he kept getting into accidents. He had like six toes left, and he lost his right hand, and his kneecap was all weird, and he had a glass eye. Nickerson, and... get on with it. Okay, so the way it used to work was you'd find some gold and go to the claims office to make a claim on the land. And one day, Mutilated Jones showed up at the claims office. He looked like he hadn't slept for days. He had a huge, crazy smile on his face. He threw a bag of gold nuggets onto the table, and then he said... Ah, uh, Mutilated Jones, you hereby make a claim on Cormorant Bay, which is yielded the purest gold ever seen in this territory, a bag of which I have here. There's one more bag I'd like to back at the mine, but please, Mr. Claims guy, keep this bag and gold nugget safe in your safe until I return. And then he got back into his canoe, paddled away, and was never heard from again. And to this day, no one knows where he got the gold because no one has ever been able to find that mine. And that was The Gold of Cormorant Bay here from the Icebox Radio Theater and Freezer Treats. I invite you to go check out that entire play at the uh, at the Tales from the Rack podcast. Uh, there is a link for that podcast below as well as a direct link to that particular show. So I invite you to go check it out. Just a little bit about this uh, this particular play. It was a lot of fun. It was in direct response to a lot of requests we had at the time. Uh, from various families that had been involved in the theater or had adults that had been involved in the theater who said they had kids that wanted to try radio. So I wrote a script specifically thinking, well, let's come up with a, a play that can feature a lot of young actors. And it, it was a lot of fun to do. It was a lot of work. Of course, we had uh, we had everyone in the studio all at once. I think there was about six or seven kids at one point, uh, plus various little sisters and hangers-on. And it was just an awful lot of fun. Fun story, too. I really do think of this as Goonies on Rainy Lake. Okay, well, this completes the first week of the Freezer Treats podcast here on the Icebox Radio Theater. Hope you've enjoyed it. Hope it's uh, giving you a chance to check out some of the shows that we have here uh, on the IBRT's various podcasts. Uh, but it is definitely meant as a microcast, meaning that I only ask for your for four or five minutes of your time each day to kind of check things out. And as we come to the end of the first week here, I realize, you know, that's not sustainable. Because if I only ask for four and five minutes and I give you a new play each and every day, well, you're just going to end up falling behind and then feeling bad and then kind of defeating the purpose of a microcast. So starting on Monday, this Monday, uh, Freezer Treats will change to a weekly show. We're going to be coming on Mondays at uh, 8 a.m. 
and you uh, the exact same format. You can listen in and find out something about uh, one of the great shows from the archives here at the IVRT, but not quite the same constraints of time. Or if you feel like after you listen to one of these episodes, you really want to hear the the play that's attached. Uh, you know, that would be an awful lot of listening every week uh, if I asked for an hour of your time each and every day. So we're going to go weekly from now on. So look forward to that on Monday, 8 a.m. And I'm guessing pretty much every Monday moving forward, we will indeed be uh, featuring a new show for you to check out from the archives of the Icebox Radio Theater. Any questions or comments, uh, you can contact us at iceboxradio.org. I'm sorry, Icebox Radio 51. Apparently there's 50 other Icebox Radios out there. Iceboxradio51 at gmail.com. And then on Twitter and Facebook, our handles there are uh, Icebox Radio. And on Instagram, our handle is Radio Icebox. This has been Freezer Treats. We'll see you Monday. <laughs>